Hey everyone, it's James Grime again from Maths World UK and today I'm speaking to Katie Steckles. Katie Steckles is a mathematician and a lecturer and a speaker and a writer, she does it all. And today she's brought in a challenge for us, it's a colouring in challenge. And actually very kindly she's made it an online interactive thing that we can all try out. So we'll put a link to that in the description and I encourage you to go there, try it out, see if you can solve the challenge and even better if it inspires you you maybe you can make up some of your own I think also I want to talk about some of the other things that Katie does online uh, first there's a blog called a periodical blog uh, which is all about maths in the news and maths articles and also she makes podcasts which I thought you might be interested in so before Katie gives her challenge for today I did ask her if she could describe her many podcasts yeah, well, um, there was a, a series that I did a few years ago, which was about careers in maths and about the kinds of things that people who use maths in their jobs do for a living. Uh, so we interviewed a bunch of people about how, uh, having done maths at A-level, how are they using it in their job? Uh, and that was really interesting because some of them were mathematicians who actually just use maths. Uh, and some of them were people who did things like forensics or archaeology or, you know, like completely unrelated jobs that you wouldn't think would be mathematical. Um, uh, we had, I think we had a computer game designer, there was a bunch of different kinds of people um, and they all had different like relationships with maths and the way that they used it but they all said I'm really glad I did A-level maths or if they hadn't they said I really wish I'd done A-level maths basically. It was quite a nice little uh, series that was called Taking Maths Further um, and at the minute I'm doing a series of podcasts called Mathematical Objects uh, which is actually with the same person that I did the other series with. Uh, but we basically choose an object each week or each fortnight or however often it comes out uh, and use it as an excuse to talk about some interesting maths. Uh, and sometimes we get special guests on as well to talk about their favourite mathematical objects. So that's kind of fun. And the thing you brought in today is kind of an online interactive uh, demo as well, isn't it? Yeah, so as well as doing the kind of writing and various things, I also do uh, workshops and talks in person, but obviously not in person at the moment. So I thought it'd be nice for people to have something that they could play with at home that I can say, you know, have a look at this uh, and have a play with it. And there's actually some really nice maths behind this. So uh, I'm using this as part of a couple of different workshops on different topics, but the, the actual thing is to do with colouring in. Uh, so I've, I've made this little thing on my own website. If you have a look in the description of the video, there should be a link there to a page. And that should look like this. So this is a little drawing here and you can see over on the right, we've got some uh, different colors that you can choose from. So the challenge is to try and color this shape in. You can pick a color and you can click on one of the things and it'll fill in the shape with the color. Um, and there are two rules, one of which is if you've got two regions that are next to each other that share an edge, they have to be different colours, so you can't have the same colour either side of a line. And if you uh, try and colour this whole thing in, um, I essentially want you to prove, and this is the kind of thing that mathematicians do all the time, is prove things. Uh, I want you to prove that you can't do this using three different colours. So I want you to have a play with this and convince yourself that it can't be done with three. Um, and maybe convince the person next to you as well. If you want to pause the video, take a couple of minutes to have a play with this. OK, so if you've had a couple of minutes to play with this or if you've just continued watching straight through, that's also fine. Uh, so I'll, I'll uncolor this one back to white again so that you can uh, start from from nothing. So a lot of people, when I give them this problem, the first thing they think is, OK, I'm going to have to start coloring this somewhere. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to color the middle bit in red. And that's a reasonable place to start. Uh, there's a thing, there's a concept in maths called without loss of generality which is a thing that you sometimes hear mathematicians see or they'll write W-L-O-G on, on a piece of maths. And if you see that, what it means is I've made a decision here, like I've chosen a thing. And in this case, it's I've chosen to start with the middle one. But actually, it doesn't matter what I chose, like whichever choice I've made, it still is sort of equivalent in some sense, because at some point I'm going to have to colour in the middle one. So I might as well start with it. So having done that, I can then see I've got four bits around it in a kind of circle. And if I want to colour those in, if I'm just allowed three different colours, there's only really one way to do that. Um, and some of you might have spotted that there is a way to do this. So if I colour these two opposite ones the same colour and then grab a third colour and do the remaining ones in the third colour, that's fine. That all works and that's all sensible. But importantly, at, at no point have I made a decision. It's not like I've started wrong. This is something I was always going to have to do. And now 
if I try and colour in this outside bit, I can do this one. I can do the, the one over on the right here, but I can't now colour in that one unless I've got a fourth colour. So I'm stuck, essentially. I've reached a contradiction. I've reached a point where I can't go any further um, without breaking my rules. So I know for sure that this can't be done with three colours. Um, and this is actually part of a really nice sort of set of problems in maths. This is a thing which um, people who uh, study certain types of maths quite often deal with this kind of problem. So um, in particular, so in this case, I'm looking at a drawing. It's made up of regions. The regions are connected to each other. The only important information here is how those regions are connected to each other. Uh, and people use this, it's got lots of nice applications. Um, and there are certain kind of results, ideas that people know are definitely true in this area of maths. Um, and one nice example of this is a thing called the four color theorem, which says that any map that you can draw any graph uh, on a flat piece of paper can always be colored in four or fewer colors. Um, and it's four colors on a flat piece of paper, I'd be very careful to, uh, to state that, if you're working on the surface of a donut, which you might be, I don't know, if the thing that you're drawing on has got a hole in it or is a funny shape and has got kind of handles sticking off it or whatever, uh, you can draw things that need more than four colours. So the, the more holes something's got in it, the more colours you would theoretically need uh, to colour in something on that, that shape. Um, the classic example of a thing with one hole in it is the mug which is a thing that's got a handle stuck on the side, so that counts as a hole. Uh, I think the mug that you've got there is a slightly ridiculous uh, mug with a hole through it as well. So that's actually got more than one hole because the handle is a hole, but there's also an actual hole through the middle of the mug. So that one gets even more complicated. Um, but you know, the, the way that the colouring works depends on the shape that you're working on, essentially. Um, so the four colour theorem is just for either flat surfaces or simple things like a sphere, like the surface of the earth. Um, nothing, nothing could need more than four colours on there as well. So you might be thinking, how are mathematicians just sat there colouring in? That doesn't feel like proper work. Uh, but there's actually a lot, a lot of interesting things to it. So if we go back to our uh, example that I was looking at before, um, you can see if I clear, there should be a, a clear button somewhere on here if you're, there we go. If you're having a play with this, you might find that useful. Um, so when we started looking at this, we said, OK, I'm going to start in the middle. But if I'd started somewhere else, if I'd started uh, with my red in, say, this piece, this isn't necessarily the middle. But as we said before, it kind of doesn't matter where you start colouring from. And this piece is different to the middle one. So on the middle, we had our nice sort of alternating uh, pattern of two colours around the outside. In this case, we look at how many pieces I've got here. I've got one, the middle one, two, three, four, five, all touching that red one now. So if I try to do my alternating yellow, blue, yellow, blue, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get stuck at some point because I can only alternate some of the way around and there are an odd number of pieces. So I can't actually do that. And in fact, this is one of the things that mathematicians who work on this will have worked out. So if you've got a shape like this that is in the middle and it's surrounded by other pieces and all of those other pieces are connected together in a loop, um, if that is an odd number of pieces, then you can't use three colours to colour whatever your drawing is. There's no way to do this with three colours. You can, of course, do this with four colours, uh, which I can demonstrate by adding in a fourth colour uh, and doing a bit more colouring in. Uh, but with three colours, you can't do it. And whether or not something can be coloured with three colours is actually quite an important question. Um, so when you've got a, a graph or a shape or a drawing or whatever it is you're looking at, uh, the number of colours you need to colour it in, the minimum number of colours you need to colour it in, because obviously I could colour it in with 12 colours, but that would be <laughs> not be as interesting. So the minimum number of colours you can colour it in with is called the chromatic number uh, of that shape. And it's kind of a, a, a challenge, I guess. How, how many colours do you need? Can you do it in fewer than that? And if you can prove that it can't be done in fewer than that, then that is officially the chromatic number of that shape. Um, and in fact, on the uh, original page that the link in the description should point you to, uh, there's another page there called Does It Need Three or Four? which is uh, a little set of challenges, puzzles, uh, for you to try and work out whether the thing needs three colours or whether you can't do it in three and you definitely need four colours. Uh, so they're all either three or four. There's none there I don't think that can be done in two, uh, but everything else, uh, everything is either three or four and it's a kind of a nice little challenge. And you can, you know, make up your own and give them to other people and send them uh, a puzzle, you know, can you find a way to colour this in? 
Uh, and for a further challenge, I've also added a link to a thing called the McGregor map, which is a famous example of something which can be coloured in with four colours, because maths tells us that everything can be coloured in with four colours, um, but is really difficult. <laughs> so it's a horrific, complicated object, uh, and it can be done with four, but it's just a real pain, and you might have to give up and start again or backtrack a little bit. And the undo button is your friend here. If you find, if you find you've made yourself a, a situation where you can't do it, that, you know there are a lot of wrong ways to start coloring it essentially so uh, it might take a little bit of time to get there but that is a nice puzzle for you to play with as well thanks katie for bringing in coloring in maps and graphs no problem thanks for having me hello i'm bag i just wanted to say thanks again to katie for bringing in her coloring in challenge and to remind you that a link to the interactive will be in the description as well as links to all the other things that katie does and so remember stay curious and I'll see you next time.